I, yeah. I've seen probably a handful of studies now looking at omega-3 supplementation and muscle mass. Uh, specifically, I think there's older women, yep. uh, usually an older population, yes. but it, yep. it helping uh, with, I don't, I think it may be helping prevent some of the atrophy or yes. helping with in lean muscle mass. Yep. Is that a real thing? It's, I mean, a, it's a real thing. I, I, like in our hands, uh, I had a, a postdoc, Chris McGlory, he, he left the lab. Uh, he, when he came, he has a faculty position now at, at Queen's University, but when he came, he was an omega-3 guy, and he said, you know, we need to study more of this in, in human muscles. So we ran a trial, and we ran it actually in younger women, and then a bunch of people said, why do you only run it in women? I'm like, nobody ever asked you that, why you only ran it in men, right? So we, we did it in younger women for, for a number of reasons. There's not much research in younger women. And we did actually think that it might be more effective in women than men for reasons I don't fully understand. As you mentioned, older women there as well. Um, we supplemented one group with very high dose omega-3 fatty acids and we supplemented the other group with sort of a, a, a corn oil placebo. And then we braced one of their legs for our local disuse atrophy model for two weeks. And the women on the omega-3 supplement saw a really mild disuse atrophy response and then returned to normal much quicker than the other group who saw a much greater atrophic response and didn't get back to normal after two weeks of, we call it passive remobilization. You remove the brace, you don't actively rehab, you're just like, go back, do all your normal things. Uh, so it's, it's, it's anti-catabolic for sure. It, it, the, you can have a nutritional intervention that can affect uh, disuse like that, that, that's a profound finding. So you can imagine with respect to our disuse, you know, uh, catabolic crisis model, lots more work to be done. That's more Chris's area. He, he, he left. I'm like, that's yours, man. You know, go is with he it. still doing it? Yeah, He's because, still doing it. I mean, you know, yep. here's the thing is that you have, you, we have this aging population yep. and it is much easier as much as we want to get them to first and foremost, can we get them to do any sort of resistance training? Yes. Obviously. Yes. But that is a struggle, especially for people that are much, much older. Yep. Um, you know, getting them to take a pill yes. is one of the easiest things that yeah. you can do. And, yeah. you know, I, I think. There, yeah, omega-3 <laughs> is, there, there, I think there's just been more and more evidence that it, you know, there's, there's many benefits, and I have I've talked about a lot of those. But, you know, I mean, yeah. the, the anti-inflammatory resolving inflammation in so many different ways, I mean, there's like, the specialized mediating, uh, pro-mediating molecules, yeah. there's the resolvents, the protectins, the maricins. I mean, it's doing, yeah. you know, it isn't just prostaglandins. It's not no. just, you know, this one, no. you know, pathway. I mean, it's no. doing a lot of things. And yeah. what role does inflammation play? So inflammation, I know from reading your work, inflammation in a disease state like mm -hmm. cancer or, you know, type 2 diabetes or things like this, yeah. I mean, it can be catabolic, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What about the low-grade chronic inflammation that unhealthy yeah I, I think the you know the, the disclaimer is you know we, we've learned a lot about how to make muscle more anabolic in, in young individuals and then we've extended that to healthy older individuals we we we, uh, we don't have older individuals participate in our study if they're on and the list of medications is relatively long so they're probably the healthiest of the older population. And so we're getting, we, we'd like to think that's a truer effect of aging rather than some meds that they're taking. But let me just say that uh, chronic low-grade inflammation or what people call inflammaging uh, is, is problematic. It, it, it's, um, it's probably responsible for some of the anabolic resistance we talked about. Uh, we think so dampening the inflammation beforehand could, could help you get more anabolic. In extreme situations of, uh, you know, so I, ICU or, or cancer or, you know, particularly cancer cachexia where people are, you know, they're swimming in, in inflammatory cytokines. And, you know, COVID gave us a, a little glimpse of uh, this cytokine storm that some people experience. And, and they, the, the prognosis becomes very poor. So we think a lot of things, you know, nutritionally can combat muscle disuse. But if you have a patient that's on bed rest and in an ICU and they're, you know, massively inflamed, you can throw a lot of things nutritionally at these people and it's just dust in the wind. Nothing really happens. So, you know, the message is you've got to get inflammation under control before you're able to see the full and robust effect of a lot of the anabolic stimuli that we're talking about. So it is, it is an issue, and it's clearly something that uh, 
people need to, to think about as they get older. I'm actually of the mind that, um, you know, uh, the low dose aspirin that a lot of people uh, are taking to sort of tamp down uh, inflammation is, is probably a good thing. But then also the flip side is to say there is some degree of inflammation that needs to happen. So if you keep chronically suppressing inflammatory responses in younger people even, I don't think you get a full adaptation. So some inflammation good and necessary, chronic low-grade inflammation probably not good, definitely rampant inflammation in, in, in all kinds of clinical states. Yeah, that's really going to take the edge off of anything that you do both nutritionally and probably from an exercise perspective too. Yeah, that, and what, what you said makes a lot of sense with obviously you do want an inflammatory response when, you're, when you need it, right? I mean, when you're, you yeah. see a pathogen. And that is also why I, why I think omega-3 is one of the best ways to kind of lower the chronic inflammation because it has to do with resolving, the, yeah. in so it's many just, ways, the resolving of it, the it, inflammation. It's almost as if you're turning down the burner, right? You're just sort of, you know, t it's taking the edge off of that. So no, I agree.